Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talking Horses. Saturday, February 1st, as Anthony was pointing out to me, Johnny and I are very excited. It's the first Talking Horses of February, and that's correct, of in fact, the new decade is 2020. Nine race car today featuring the Withers. Anthony Stabile will be joining me in just a moment. We have the Withers, and of course, Withers is a prep race for the Kentucky Derby. 17 points being given out, 10 to the winner. I think it's 10, 4, 2, and 1. A number of preps as well, some big races in Florida. Tis the law. The New York bred is making his three year old debut for uh, Barkley Tag. Manny Franco down in Florida ride him. Interesting matchup in the Swale as well with the impressive Maiden Breaker Untitled running against a very talented Green Light Goes, a horse I know a lot of people around here are rooting for. Looking forward to seeing seeing him run. You'll be wanting to play those races, and you can play them in all races at Naira Betts. Head on over. 100% deposit match up to $200. New members only. Promo code is, think Anthony Stabile. Think the big A. 50-50, bet at least 50 at both Aqueduct and Oaklawn on your app, and your app only, and you get a $10 bonus. Need to find some plays that, I don't know, should I just bet place on Terraz maybe in there? Does, uh, the, the, I guess the, the cross country doesn't count, right? No, the cross country. In fact, the that cross, cross country, country, that'll be starting with our withers, the eighth and ninth here. And then you go to the ninth, and then just a few minutes after our ninth, the seventh is scheduled to go at Oaklawn. The seventh, eighth, and ninth at Oaklawn featuring the American Beauty. Any race. I think it's nice for Rick Hammerly being there. Noted Drayful Deadhead. Yes. First year there. They have a stake named for a dead album. Yeah. Don't know if they named that one for a dead album. I don't know. Maybe they did. Now, the withers. It's also a movie, right? I was American, thinking. Oh, you talk, yeah, American yeah, Beauty. yeah. Right. Great movie. Great movie. Um, I was thinking about the withers. I feel like the Withers one of those races. I know that Jerome's moved a lot, you know, and now, and, moved you know, plenty. the Withers was the world away, right? Wasn't the second stake the world away for a while? Count Fleet world away, correct? Right. Count Fleet world away. My, my dad was an agent at Leo Bazoo. The Withers was the opening day feature at Belmont, Dixie Brass in right. 1992. Paid 17 bucks. Yeah. Hit a, hit a and three he won, run. The, he won the Met Mile as a three year old as well. 22 and 2, 44 Dennis and 4, Friday. 8 and 2, 133 and 3. I hit a three run homer off of Chris Novak as I turned the bases. I yelled to my father, Would he pay? And he said, $17 in the Wizards. Was the end of Chris's career? Say that again? I think that was the end of Chris's career as a pitcher. We had a, we had a, he hit me the next, uh, the next <laughs> inning. We had a brawl on the, so on no, the mound. It wasn't. But I had 3,400 from betting 420 on Dixie Brass, so I felt okay. I hit a bomb into Larry Morales' well, front yard. Ask, hitting you with a baseball, there's, you know, oh, I don't even, I think, I don't even know what, where they could hit you that you would you Hit would me hurt. between the shoulders. That's what you hit. Oh, you okay. can ask Leduca when you see him into someone. You hit him between the so, shoulders. So, but the Withers hurt. was also, it became almost like a Preakness prep because I remember Bernardini winning it. He won it, I believe it was closing weekend here. Yeah, for it was. A few it was. Years. And who was the favorite in the race? A four horse field, I think, Rick Dutro for Samantha Siegel. Mm -hmm. Like, here's Zealous yep. or one of those one of Zealous, Zealous horses. horses. Yeah, he wound up favorite. standing in New York here, Zealous. Um, Bernardini won impressively before winning the previous. Did they rename it? The, there was one year when Drosselmeyer got beat. The Peter Pan was not the Peter Pan. No, 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 no. That was the year that we didn't run both the Dwyer and the Peter Pan. And what did we so call we it? So we swapped them. So with Dwyer, we ran the Dwyer. In, we ran the Dwyer in the spot we would run the Peter Pan. Okay. And fly down drowned him. And that was the day that I got disqualified in that phantom DQ that cost me like 15000 to pick four. Um, I, I, I want to say mm -hmm. Guapo was the horse, something like that. Yeah. It was some phony phantom debut they couldn't Ten even find. Ago. Ten years ago, Andy. Was it 2010? Yeah. Drops of Mine was 2010. Yeah, fly down, you know, Fly Down was a very good kind of forgotten horse. I mean, lost that brutal nose. Got beat the Zop in the, the Travers. He ran, ran third, third in the Breeders' Cup. Cup. I mean, actually, looking at Lucky, he ran fourth. Blaine and ran, ran a super race because he was actually the first mover before Blaine he made the move. He never had any luck at Churchill Downs looking at Lucky. I mean, he ran very well in that yeah, race. He did. But fly down, was a, fly down was a very good horse for Nick. I think they sold him, and he went over to, um, to Dubai. To, yeah, to, yeah. To, yeah, and I never never saw him again. Saw I, think him again. Was, I think he ran twice over there in the prep and then in the World Cup, and that was it. He was a very good horse, though, fly down. Anyhow, Richie Pell owned him. Remember? Yeah. Yep. Richie, and, and, Pell. and Nick trained him. Anyhow, race number one, I am not trying to beat in to win. Um, who just feels I'm not our biggest fan, and I searched long and hard to try to beat her. You obviously aren't a fan, and we'll get to that in a moment. I just think she's faced better horses. Todd Pletcher has extremely strong numbers across the board, anywhere at Naira, distances, particularly maiden special to maiden claimers. So they're not usually damaged goods. I think she's going to win. Now, the horse that many would take 
they're trying to beat her would be the three, Super Blood, Wolf, Moon, who finished second. We'll show that second in the sloppy track here. This is one where I, unless you feel that she dramatically improved going long, I think you also have to ask your eternal question, Anthony, is she also track. on a wet track? Yeah, and I, I, she, she could have very well, he could have, she could have very well just improved on a wet track. She got dead tired at the eighth pole here, <laughs> and you see her get the wobbles. Um, was a Brad Cox, four to yeah. five favorite, I think, won the race? This was Vibrancy, who had dropped out of the mix. She ran well enough in the special weight race, and then she was behind huh. Autonomous, right? And then she got beat. But that uh, Autonomous like, race is turning well, into a you know, stink. Yeah, exactly. Autonomous isn't very good. She she just gets her the last two or three jumps in here. I want to give her one more chance. Look, in the wind's going to be a prohibitive favorite. So why get on my good side? Well, I, I tried want, to make this I didn't horse, trust but... Super Blood Wolf Moon. I don't want in the wind. At, uh, at, she's two to five now. I don't imagine she's going to be much higher than one to two. I just um, worry that this horse is too slow. I yeah, second. she might be. I'm trying to will her there. I just worry she's too slow. Maybe. I mean, Into the wind's going to be an overwhelming. You know, she's not going to be four to five. I she's mentioned this be. briefly yesterday, how I like when some guys and gals, when these trainers run these horses naked, couple of starts. I love what John Servers did here. He sprinted her, he stretched her out, and now for the third start with a little foundation, he puts the blinkers on. But he's also he dropping drops her into her a maiden claimer. But this is where she belongs up here, isn't it? Right? She's gonna be yeah, finding the special has... way company tough tough up here. You're gonna take her for fifty? I don't think anybody's taking her for fifty today. No. I think this is a safe Unless move. Unless she has some pedigree that suggests yeah. she's worth it. And then John... you get her then you get her eligible for all the starters. John Service is seven for seventeen, uh maiden special, maiden claimer and dirt routes. He's twenty one for sixty five overall. Both of them have ROIs that are positive. So he is good with the drop down. I just worry that she might just be too she slow. She might be too slow. That's, she that's could very my, well be my too biggest slow. concern. I, I wanted to pick her. Um I just I, I just ended up with a favorite. Race number two, I thought the second race is either very simple or very hard. I took the simple route and I went the seven future book. And you know, it's easy, and we'll take a look at her last win or his last win. It's easy to look at horse that won and say, I should have bet that horse. I really blew it not picking. I think I picked this horse second. Or you something. were very angry about this. Well, because this horse had actually had a trip the time before that because it was trying to go a mile at chasing the pace and a pace that collapsed. This was actually a very good ride by Jorge Vargas, Great who ride. I was critical of, and I thought he, he should not have raided Dominic Catino's horse yesterday. And I imagine Dominic probably felt the same way, but I thought this was a very good ride by Jorge Vargas because he was very aggressive here and he did the right thing. And I just thought, you know what? I looked at this race, Anthony, just said, this horse just might be faster than these horses. Yeah, she could be. Listen, he could be. Listen, he gave this horse a great call this race last time. It was the end of the last race on the card. He jacked this horse. He jacked this He jacked this horse out of there yep. and opened five oh, he on rode. the field. He rode and with a purpose. It was yep. over. Bo uh, Robbie Falcone's horse, Kilmarnock, chased him Actually around. Actually ran there. very well. That's what going to like that day, and he ran yep. very well to be second. They ran one, two around the racetrack. Nobody really moved. Um, the one horse that came out of there was the Cats Lion by the tail, who didn't really do a no. lot of running the other. Day. Well, Linda, Linda's horses have been, every well, one of them has been, have been dead on the board. Yeah. Completely, they iced up on the board like yep. unbelievable. The first one ran great yesterday because in the race with Rosie's Invasion. I don't think anyone got, ran great in there. Rosie's Invasion made the left-hand turn and racked up the three and the four, and he had to go all the way around and rush up and got beat two lengths. I thought it was a guy. I thought, I thought that it was ran. I, I, I won't be using the term great to describe okay. anybody out of that race. All right. Fair enough. So why reject it again? This is not your normal kind of horse, and I think it's one of the problems in this race is that the recent form for so many of the competitors are on wet tracks, yep. and you have to decide how much you believe them bad or good. You have to bet a horse rejected again. You have to hope this horse improves a lot. Well, Gary Gullo, I saw him walking in last time, the day this horse broke his mane, he goes, you know, this horse is really unlucky, keeps catching wet track after wet track. This horse is much better on a dry track and gets the job done in the mud last time out. So now... His second place finish in the three-horse field well, is where Gary... Got just, that opinion? Listen, you know, when the horse train, these horses train and stuff, he obviously saw something that made him believe the, the, this horse was going to run better on a fast track. I wasn't sold on Future Book. Um, and I just want to take a little shot against him. What a price. I, I this think, horse is going to be one of the longest shots I, I on the board. It's not the biggest a, price on the board. I think there's a lot of horses here, Anthony, that you yeah. can look at. I mean, Blue City. Blue City may not have wanted a mile and may not have liked the wet track. Don't love his maiden breaking two back, but at least in that race with the blinkers, he was he wasn't green anymore. And he Titans actually Will did himself. finally come back and win. He did. Titans Will did get against out of the a horrific ranks. field, but yeah. he did win. Um, yes for less. Yes for less is that big race in Florida, and then comes up here and gets a sloppy sealed track. Did he run a random race in Florida, and it's just one of those races he'll never run again? Because if he runs back to his race two back, he can win this race. I'm going to give him another chance because I liked him last time. He didn't run at all. Even Money Ride. Now, Money Ride's run well on wet tracks, but he also got a bad ride three races back, or a bad trip, I should say. Um, so he was kind of compromised, but he couldn't get a mile you last were, time. I mean, you and I obviously have. You could probably make, you could make a case for anybody in this race. 
If you think Future Book's a little vulnerable, which I do, you listen, can make a case uh, for you like of the them. three. I don't like the three. I don't like the four. David likes cryptographer, and I respect his opinion. So yeah, I, I can't argue with that. I guess any horse can probably win this race. Race number three. I don't think any horse can win race number three. <laughs> but Justice of War will finally get to run. This is for Linda Rice, and this is coming off a layoff from Saratoga. And I got to tell you, I originally picked against this horse, but really felt he was the horse to beat. And Judging from what we've seen from the horses that Linda's been bringing back with these claiming waiver, none of them have run. I know. And none of them have been bet either. I and with Linda, it's like the money's usually pretty smart with her. And I'll tell you one thing. When the money says, not today, they never win. Yep. With that said. This horse obviously could win. With that said, I, you should probably knock me over with a feather if the seven or eight don't win this uh, race. You really want to make a case for Tony Small or State of Mind? Well, I tried making here, a case for State the of case, Mind. Here's the case against them. Okay. Justice of War is not really that good. He hasn't been out in six months. He can't run anymore. Certainly not impossible. Dodge the bullet. Do you know the horse is that beat Dodge the bullet? I, it's funny. I had forgotten, and, and Dave and I were texting about it the other night. I had looked the horse up, and it was like it was his twenty-third start when he broke his maiden. And he reminded me, remember that horse we that came from... We talked about him the other day? No. He's the horse that came from Parks last year and was a heavy favorite in some maiden race and had literally one of the most despicable hang jobs in the history of horse racing. <laughs> and we said, this horse will never, ever <laughs> win. And the horse broke, the beat this horse first. Look, we'll look this horse up before we play her. You'll remember the horse. Okay. So he lost to a horse that... He lost to an over 20-something uh, man. It was over 20. It was his 23rd start. So, I mean, I granted, I, I like him too. He's claimed, you know, we'll see. Patty Farrow, actually, for what it's worth. You know, she has decent numbers off the claim. Nothing special, but nothing bad. Harness connection here, too. Scott Domenico is uh, one of the top harness trainers really? in the Northeast. So, uh, yeah. Those harness guys are dangerous. They are dangerous. Yeah, I mean, They're so, but the answer right. is this horse lost to a proven loser, and the seven can't run, and therefore, it was like Tony Small, who, believe me, I don't particularly like, yeah. or the three state of mine, who I don't particularly like. I was glad to see Michelle get a win yesterday, yes. though. You know, it's 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 been hard. You know, I, you, you feel for any trainer. That was such that a weird best. race too yes. yesterday. You're in really first and third, race. actually. Yeah, I agree. Well, that horse never looked like it was going to win. That horse looked like it was backing up Michelle's horse in the turn, and then they just stopped. I was watching. Ju I, I was watching Junior through binoculars. It looked like he was having like some steering trouble, and then all of a sudden she just. Ran on. I just think so many horses just completely and totally failed to show up in that race. The first, the first is ran two, three. Right. Yeah. And Linda's horse, did you say, could have run a winning yeah. race, but that that's a race I want to avoid horses out okay, of going fair forward. Enough. Uh, race number four. Once again, more Linda Rice. Linda has an entry here with Sergeant Drive and Hizam. And Sergeant Drive never wins. I can't trust him, but he can win. And Hizam makes some sense. I don't know what to do with horses out of the Kumar race because it feels like Kumar ran and everybody else spun their wheels. Oh. Now, are they bad or was it just one of those weird races or did Kumar run so well? Because frankly, Hizam ran his race and I think he is the worst to beat. I, do I prefer him of the entry. Yeah, just... I do too. I have, I have a tough time. We talked about this briefly yesterday too with Big Mountain. I have a tough time discerning what kind of real running got done behind these daylight winners. And yeah, I I'm going to give Creative Style one more try. Uh, he was bad last time. I know, time. I know. I wanted to pick him, Anthony, and, and I get it. But it doesn't it just feel with him like Eddie's dropping him and he's dropping him and... Well, this is a Dr. Bernie horse, and Dr. Bernie wants to win a race. I understand they so, want to win a race. I'm just afraid his good races are way behind him. Maybe. I, look, I've got him third. You I'm might not... be right. You know what? Ordinarily, I don't like taking these Rudy, these old Rudy horses. I don't like it. But, I, you know, I mean, his am's, his am is his am. I don't really like Sergeant Drive today. Uh, Jerome Avenue, I guess, makes some sense. The horse you put on top, but... Uh, really, he was taking off Steve Esmussen, and I, I don't know. Did he well, do a whole Jerome lot Well, with Jerome Avenue, running? honestly, he's the speed. Yeah, he's the speed. He's the speed, and you look at his last race. This was the race where, and I think Dylan recognized it, and it's interesting, Dylan got much more aggressive after that. This is a race where Dylan rated him, and I think he realized very quickly, why did I rate this horse? This was also the he race He wasn't winning, but he should have sent him the This front. was also the race where traveling was the late scratch when he got loose behind the gate. He's in later on. That's why he and scratched. And then House Limit. I'm trying to remember why he House scratched. Limit was the they knew of the century. Yes. yes. So well, you knew. I, you liked him. Yeah. There was kind of a, you and know, I he comes his, out of a weird race. His prior race, I know it was a speed track. 
but he got kind of compromised in the front end. It was a wicked pace, and thought today he could try to wire the field. Sure. I don't love him, and I'm surprised David had him two to one. I didn't think he'd be that short, well, especially with an entry. He's we're both, loose. Yeah, but so what? He's he made the up, entry favorite. Uh, just because he's be, loose, if, even win. if the entry's even money, what's he going to be? Five to two. I mean, two not to sure. One, five, not not sure. Be. We'll see. And I just hard to make a case. I guess for anybody. The, at, the, at, at the end of the day, and that's the point. Yeah. It's very hard to make cases. The problem with Jerome Avenue is, is he loose? Because Rock and Joe is fast, and this is one where I had an exception with a pace projector because the pace projector has him clear over Rock and Joe. If Rock and Joe wants to. Gives you a lot of speed. Yeah, he could. So um, that's one reason I'm a little dubious of him. I just didn't feel like taking the entry on top, and I don't trust your six, though obviously he can win. Yeah. Race number five, you know, I was surprised in race number five. And you know how much I respect Mike Beer's opinion? He picked Gratz because I thought Gratz was brutal last time. And you know, I'm a big fan of the job that the, you know, the guys do in the, Jimmy Bond's part. Kevin and Ryan and the, do an amazing you know, job here in the winter. This horse was terrible. I mean, he broke a step slow, but Raylu gave him an absolutely perfect trip after that, and the horse just had nothing. We keep, I keep giving and excuses. a slow race. I keep giving excuses up here, but after the daylight scores, these young horses in the off-the-turf races, they're kind of hard to discern as well because are they really intended for the turf? Well, obviously, this well, he's horse... he's a Tisway, right, so he's a Tisway, so I'd probably want him on the turf. And But, you know, that is also, you got to take into account the horses in New York, right? So you're not going to be and shipping Well, they'll give him one shot yeah. in this race to see if he can run in the and dirt. And he got two months and until the turf starts. And back on the turf exactly. in, in two months. Exactly. exactly. I, couldn't li I couldn't like him based on that, but... I mean, the three of us just pretty much have four firsters in a different order. And you have to Two be careful. Us. Well, obviously, the one, four, seven, and eight are the ones you yeah. look at. But um, I think that you do have to respect that he is a horse of experience. I just didn't like him here. You've got the eight eloquent speaker on top. I'll be honest with you. I took the two of, of the four firsters. Uh, that I gave any kind of uh, shot to in here. I took the two guys that win with first-time starters more than the other two. I put them on top. I know Jeremiah Englehart's barn has not been uh, on fire, to say the least, here no. at the Big A this winter. And he's run out of a lot of bullets. He with has his first run out of a lot of bullets. With his firsters. He has. He has. But Well, you can't you can't win with as many firsters the guy <laughs> won with and expect it to keep up. You can't keep having No, of course not. Months. It's just not possible. More of averages catches up right. with you eventually. Um, you run your good firsters mostly, you know, and they win. I just put them one, two. I don't know. I felt like he had more of a sprint Pedigree on paper than the rail well, runner. I don't know. He's an un, the, I don't the know. eight is an unraced dam, and I don't know. It's a first foal. I don't have any real opinion on that one. I think the sprint pedigree is the seven quality stones. I mean, the dam was a sprinter that got got figures in the seventies. The seven quality stones. It's her second foal. The first one wasn't very good, but the dam herself is a half to bust in stones. Yep. So if you want the As one that really has name, the, she's stone six. Well, I mean, if you if you if you if you want to have you know a horse that's supposed to have speed, the seven. I took the four home run honey. This this is a horse, if you look up the pedigree on the dam side of Home Run Honey, and I know she's a Freud, but nonetheless, it's not like Freud stands for 6,500, it's not like he's standing that much. The dam side is disgraceful. I mean, they're terrible horses. This horse sold for $50,000, yeah, which is that. a lot of money to pay considering the pedigree. This horse's two-year-old work I thought was extremely impressive. He worked 10 flat, or she did, and I thought she did it very much on her own. So the reality is, if they haven't taken the speed out of her, Home Run Honey could have speed in this race. And I just liked the workout, and I thought, you know what? This horse is not going to be the favorite here. It's Benji Hernandez and Kimmel. They're not going to make this horse a short price. Unless, and if she's a short price, she'll probably win by a pole. I just thought, you know, she's the best guess in here. Yeah, pick five, uh, the Crossroads race, both in both pick fives, in the Empire Six, and in, in the early pick four. Uh, I hate to have to do it, but I'm just going to use the four of them and hope for the best. Yeah, no, I think that's what most people will do. And I think I ended up with the one that may be the biggest price, whether that's good or not. I, would agree I don't with that. know. Uh, race number six is a funny race. Um, we'll start with the Collegeville Girl Quietude race. And I don't particularly like either one. The first thing I want to show is just briefly show Quietude at the start because she does break a bit slow. Now, she's developed this habit. I thought this was an excellent ride by Dylan because he realized there was no pace in here and not, he didn't just let her fall back after she got left. He rode her into the race and it made a difference. I actually think she ran much better. I thought Collegeville Girl did 
almost no running. Kind of just and if you need rail. a quietude for second in this race, these are the kind of beats you want to just throw up. Because quietude did all the running. She got left. She had to rush up. She was wide. The other words just sat along on the rail and got second simply because she was on the rail. And, you know, I'm glad to see Eric Kinsella is back riding, um, obviously, after he, got, he was in the spill here on Thursday. Um, I, I just, I, I got to tell you something. I've had enough of Collegeville girl. I know you got her second. I, I don't like this horse. Wow, off the board. I don't yeah. like the race, okay. and I, I don't like her. I, you know what the problem with her is? She's completely and you totally unreliable, and she doesn't have her speed anymore. You're probably, with the two horse, with, with Collegeville girl and with the Willow Whale, you'll talk about in a minute, you probably had to do one of two things. You had to decide you were going to put the divorce papers in with Collegeville girl. And just I've just seen enough. Seen enough, right? She can win, but I don't want her. Or, you, or see, to me, I, I want to lean on the one and the four a little bit in here, and then uh, I, I maybe mean the four, we'll go ahead with the four. Well, I, I like you know this was the one that I cost myself the pick four and the pick five two starts back. I used the other turf force that made the she lead. She beat Wisconsin ball. night. I know though, she man. did. I know, but she, but she beat Wisconsin. And then she night. got beat by Sadie Lady. Well, no, very, Shady Lady overlaid that field. At the very least, she's shown... Shady Lady would win this race. Yeah. At the very least, she's shown she is competitive on the dirt. Mm -hmm. And Well, I assume I, you're taking it because you expect the horse to move forward off the claim for Rick. I absolutely do. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, Rick does a fantastic job. I think the horse is going to move forward a little bit. And I think this horse is going to find herself in a good spot today, right? A will away is supposed to go to the lead. Um, I'm curious to see what they do with Collegeville Girl, but to be honest with you, I think if, if Ray was a little aggressive... Collegeville Girl, they could ride a little bit. Yeah. I just don't think she's as fast anymore. It's a will away, I don't love her, but she's not impossible at all. It's an interesting trader switch to Bob Glaceris. And, you know, this is a horse that has a lot of speed. And Like, what was she doing in the New York Oaks her last race in July? And, you know, she's got races fast enough. She's got an interesting trader change. Just put her in the lead. And hope for the best. In a race where I just didn't really like anybody, I don't want Cape Cod Diva at a short price. Okay. She can win. I bet trouble for Skyler last time. She ran a winning race. She ran into a horse that just absolutely Twice freaked. Twice now. Right, and came back and won a subsequent start. Though she came back and got very lucky to win because A, she got the pace to collapse, and B, she had that perfect suck-up trip in the rail, and the horse that she beat but by a But the magical money came in both here. times, and she got to the yes, wire. they knew. They knew with her. But trouble for Skyler could clearly win this race and think she's sort of logical. I'll use two four seven here, and the two will be the best price, and she'll be the speed. If Collegeville Girl wins, I lose. I would even use a little quiet. I can't bet Collegeville Girl because she's going to be a shorter price than a horse that simply ran better than she did last time. Okay. I can't, yeah, I can't I, do I, it. I, I, I got it. I got it. Race number seven, big scratch in here. Mental model came out, and a lot of people like that horse. Um, you like traveling. I do. We talked about it earlier. Scratch behind the gate last time. Um, after getting loose, uh, I didn't know what happened because I was upstairs in my office, but got loose last time. You know, a horse was against the racetrack chasing on a, on a good speed track. First time here for Rudy off a private purchase. I'm assuming the horse is going to be up closer today. It's Louis Saez now. Uh, Louis, of course, in town to ride Shotsky. Shotsky. Yeah, of course. And, I mean, quite frankly, Andy, I mean, I guess Digital Footprint has some speed in well, here and I guess Escape, but I think traveling's got to be a little closer than that. Oh, I think, I think a traveling, right traveling's supposed to be in front here. Yeah. You know, the thing with traveling is I think that traveling was compromised last time out. That track was extremely kind to yeah. speed. And traveling probably was compromised when he was best race. But the concern I would have for traveling is, and he has run well on a dry track. The dry track. But, you know, for a guy like you who, who focuses a lot more than I do on wet tracks and dry tracks, I think you have to worry a little bit. This horse might prefer a wet track. But I know one thing. If he runs as well as uh, Where's Rudy, who ran faster than Sir Winston yesterday, he'll win this race by 50 lengths and run 140 buyer. Because if, 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 if Where's Rudy can run a 95 buyer, a he's buyer. got a 130 in him. He's got a 130. He's ghost zapper like good. Because that was one of the silliest things I've ever seen. I think Danny California will take some money in here as well. And he's another horse, you know, he kind of sucked up for second last time out. This is race two back of the Joe Smoking Gun. I thought he'd show the great work by our camera crew, the guys in the truck doing their usual amazing job, you know. Uh, I think he's been a bit compromised in his races, and I think he's a very logical player in this race. Yeah, I agree. I, um, I prefer traveling, but I don't think it was impossible. And again, this was that day where speed was good, and he did a lot of running late in the game here and yep. almost got to uh, Big yep. Mountain and Joe Smoke and Gun, both of, who, both of whom came back to win. Well, this wasn't the day speed was really good. 
Oh, th this day? No. Oh, December 14th? Yeah, was, yes, yeah. you're right. That was Excuse the day. me, you're right. That was the next race, I think. Uh, traveling was later in the card, I believe. So, yeah, uh, he makes some sense. He did come back and run on the two-turn race. He finished second to house limit. I, yeah, I mean... I guess he's a player. He always seems to be a player, but he loses right. more than he wins, and he's always a short price. I, I think that's very, very fair. Now, we'll take a look at the race, the digital pr printout, uh, footprint, and spectacular, spectator sport come out of, excuse me. Spectator sport obviously won. Digital footprint was second. Spectator sport won, but he also took advantage of an absolutely wicked pace that fell apart. That wicked pace fell apart, except for digital footprint, yep. while the other horses, and some of them have come back and run well, that were in the pace were getting the absolute staggers. Digital footprint just kept running along. Now, it's absolutely reasonable to ask, well, maybe he just liked a wet track. But I don't think it's unreasonable to say, maybe Chad Brown should have run this horse in the dirt to begin he's with. Never run on a, he's never caught a dry track. Right. The only well, time on the dirt was last time. He's never been on, right. And he, well, Chad never ran him on the dirt, and when the Aspis and Barn claimed him, they continued to run him on the turf. And it's not as though he ran poorly in those races. But based on his last race, he's a better dirt horse. Now, once again, it absolutely could be the wet track. I that. But he's not going to be 2-1 to one or 5-2 to two in No, here. he's not. And in my opinion, if he runs his last race, he's going to be very tough to beat. Because that was a giant effort for him because he was involved in that wicked pace that just fell apart in there. So I'll take my chances with him. Well, recognizing the traveling is the horse to beat, and I'll play a little 6 1. Fair enough. Race number eight is the Withers. Oh, the cross country pick five. Thank you, Jose. Boom. Thanks for reminding us. Can't wait for Starts this. Starts with the Withers. It's the eighth and ninth races here, and races seven, eight, and nine, including the American Beauty at Oaklawn as well. That'll start with the Withers. Post time is 425, and I guess the last post will probably be right a little after 6. So 6.06, I think, yeah, is the which last means post. Which means it'll be about 615, because mm -hmm. Oaklawn, Oaklawn, I don't know if you know, they've been known to. You know, it could be 7 o'clock for all I know. They've, they've had some funny post times, right? That doesn't happen anymore. That happened years ago. I remember Not years ago going to an OTB to try to watch a race, and I was like, they were wrapping up the 6th when I was going to look at the 8th, and I thought I was like 10 minutes away from the I had fun down race. there last year. Hey, you, know, you were very excited you about that. You should drive place. down there. I might. Well, drive. I might one of these days. Might be because of dangerous states for you. You want to drive with me? That would be a good trip. We could go to Southland Park in Memphis. Yeah, let's go. Let's talk about Shotsky. We'll see if we can get through this race. Obviously, if you want our picks for the ninth race, you'll have to go to the website. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Anthony. I struggled mightily with this race. I, I, I feel like the whole field can win. I don't particularly like or dislike anybody. I think Shotsky is a really good horse. But he did benefit very much from being with the racetrack on Remsen Day. So as the favorite, I can't pick him can't on top. Can't pick him on top. But he might be pretty good because it's not as though our prior races were bad. But he did improve when everything was going his own way. Just not the kind of worst I could pick I, him I next don't, time. I don't, think there's, I don't think there's anything else really to add to that. Um, I, I think he's an obvious player. I think today we'll, we will get a better gauge on him. Because it is hard to really yep. applaud or indict him off that last well, effort. Well, I think you say he ran as well he as he had to, well and you can't he knock him. But he did have things go his own right. way. And as the favorite, he becomes somewhat vulnerable. I I'm going to take a small shot with Monday morning quarterback. And I like the fact that nobody likes him, which means he'll be bigger <laughs> than this four, four to one morning line. Only this idiot. And my opinion hasn't been so strong lately that I that's a re endorsement. Last two races were good. I'm just hoping that Jorge Vargas chooses to be aggressive with him. Just put him on the front end. He is the speed. I mean, he is faster than he's these faster horses, than these early. horses early. Put yep. him in front. And, you know, I think Shotsky the next is going to be very happy to rate. And he may win anyway rating. I realize he's got to get a mile and eight. He has some funny pedigree, imagining. He's got to be the best imagining out there, right? And then you've got a not for love <laughs> He damn. might be the only imagining well, I was say, I was saying <laughs> that... that I hope for the connections he's so good that they never run him on the, on turf. the turf. But he does have a pedigree that screams turf. He but sure he's does. run well in the dirt. And you know, but three chips him in here. Why not for connections that seem to have had some good runners over the year? I, I, Anthony, I struggled. He might just be a bad pick and might not be able to get the mile and an eighth. But I'll take a shot. Yeah. You're obviously not a particularly big fan. No, he's the fifth. He's my fifth pick. And believe me, it is. I'll have a pick five ticket here. And a cross country uh, that has five horses on it. Everybody but you and I likes the three max player. David likes the horse. Beer likes the horse. Why? I don't know. A couple of two-turn races down at Parks. Remember that Miles two-turn? So he does have the experience around the two turns. Um, blinkers, lace, blinkers, slop, second time Linda, not just in New York. Obviously works in Philadelphia as well because he got the money last time. I don't know. And, I mean, at that price, if, if people are going to bet Linda Rice, you know, 
Well, you're gonna, we're going to run out of time, so why don't you tell us about your pick, Van Zee. Listen, I like Van Zee. Van speaking of Philly Park, the source was two for two around two turns. He wanted Phil, he wanted Philly Park in his maiden race. He wanted the display on the all-weather in a blizzard. Aren't up you at, worried, uh, though, that his only fast race was on a synthetic course? I am a little bit. It also came with the blinkers. The, it also, the blizzard factor? It also came in the blizzard, so I'm going to go outside it's today. It's like try the Arctic and, up there. I'm going to blow some talcum did, powder in his face. Did they, they cancel the this day after? The, the, they could have very well canceled after this, or they may have they're run. They're definitely the, off the turf, right? They may have ran the valedictory and then canceled after that. I don't remember. I think we had an all-turf card that day anyway, on December 14th. I mean, he's not... They were aggressive last time because there was nobody on the lead. He's got some speed in here. He'll have a target. He's one from off the pace. I'm going to try him. And he